Hello and welcome to the sew along tutorial for the Helena corset. This is one of my newest pattern releases that I absolutely adore. This corset has a lace up back and pointed cups. The ball gown skirt that you see me wearing in this video is also available for purchase. The link to my Etsy is in my bio and you guys can download and purchase these patterns. They come in sizes extra small through 3XL and an AO, US letter, and A4. And let's go ahead and get started on this tutorial. So you can see I've already cut out all of my pieces. Step number one that I'm going to do is I'm gonna use an interfacing for all of my pieces, including the modesty panel, if you're using the modesty panel, which is what I'm doing right here. If you don't know what the modesty panel is, that is the back portion so that your lace-up isn't showing back. It's just covered in the back where the lace-up corset portion is. So I'm just gonna iron on my light to mid-weight interfacing to the wrong side of my main fabric and doing that for all of those pieces except for the cut pieces, which you can see I have done here. All of these are now interfaced. I'm gonna put my modesty panel aside and we're gonna work on our corset and we're gonna do this side by side before connecting at the front. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take my center back place it right sides facing with my side back, pin into place, and we are going to sew that down. The entire pattern is marked as having a half inch seam allowance, so that's how you'll sew this along the entire pattern. Once that's done, we're gonna move along and we are going to take our side back, place it right sides facing with our side front, pin in place, and we will sew that down. Next, we're gonna do those same things, but with our side front to our center front piece. Pin in place and we will sew that down. Once that's done, we will have an entire side done. And now I'm going to repeat those exact same steps for the opposite side of my corset. Now I have two sides of my corset that are complete. I'm gonna connect this at the center. I like to do it this way because if you start to get off on your sewing, it's a little bit easier doing it side by side and then the center so that everything evens out. And we're gonna pin that just like you see and sew that down until I have a full corset minus the cups. And now I'm gonna press all of those seams open with my iron. Once that's done, I'm gonna repeat those exact same steps with my lining fabric. And we are gonna create another corset and press those seams open just like we did on our main fabric. Once you're done with this, set your lining aside. We will grab that later. We're gonna take our main fabric corset right now and our sew-in bowing. I have a half inch sew-in boning that we're using right here. And we're just gonna measure our boning channels. I do have a graphic that I'll show you guys right after this so you know where all your boning channels go, but obviously one in the center front. And we're gonna measure three fourths of an inch from the bottom and three fourths of an inch from the top. So that way we have room in our boning channels. You can see I'm doing the center front and then our two side front seams and then our two side seams after that, these two right here. So you will have five total boning channels that you are cutting right now in this step. Here's where you can see exactly all of your boning channels. There are five total in the front. You'll see there are two back boning channels at your center back. We're gonna enter those in later. This is the bone that your grommets will be pressed up against so that your corset isn't being pulled by the fabric. It's being pulled by that boning and has a little bit more structure. But for right now, we're messing with that five front boning channels that we have just cut. To place our boning, we're actually not doing channels. I am sewing this into the seam allowance. This allows us to not have sewing on the outside of our corset. So we'll take this and place it in the center of our seam and sew it to each side of our seam allowance. And I'll show you what I mean by this, but this is a much more couture technique. So that way you don't have sewing on the outside of your corset. But if you like, you can also just sew channels if that's what you're used to. To sew our boning into the seam allowance, you can see here, I've got this flipped all the way back. So only my seam allowance is underneath my actual needle and plate. And I'm sewing the boning into one side. You can see that here. And then I'm gonna repeat and do the exact same thing for the other side. And I'm gonna sew my boning onto that side and my corset is flipped. So it's only the seam allowance that's underneath 
my sewing machine. I hope that makes sense and you guys can tell what I mean, but you'll see when I flip it to the outside, there's no seam for my boning and no stitching. So this gives a much cleaner look on the outside of your garment. Now that my boning has been entered, we are going to attach our lining and we're gonna do this everywhere on the top and the sides, excluding our under bust. So I'm gonna take this and place it right sides facing to each other and we're gonna do the side, the center, and the top. And I'll show you guys when I'm pinning this. You can see I've done one side, the top. Make sure all of your seams are aligning when you do this. And then I'm gonna do that center right there. Again, we're excluding the under bust portion. Those will be done way later when we do the cups. And then again, the other top and then the side of the corset. And we are going to sew all this down in place once I have everything pinned. Now that I have that sewn up, I'm going to trim off all of my excess seam allowance. And then we're going to flip that right sides out. Make sure you get all your edges nice and crisp and we're going to give that a nice press. Once I have everything pressed and in place, I'm going to do a top stitch just on the top edge of my corset. I'm not going to do it on the side because I'm gonna be creating a channel for the boning, which we're gonna do in our next step. But again, we're just gonna do that on the top edge. So that middle piece I will do and the other two top edges of my corset. Once I've done my top edge, I am going to take my ruler and we're gonna go half an inch from both center back pieces. This is where we're gonna make our channel for our boning. So I'm going to mark half an inch down all the way perpendicular to my center back, sew that down, and then I'm gonna cut boning just like we did in our earlier steps with 3 fourths inch at the top and 3 fourths inch at the bottom. And I'm gonna cut two of those. Now because I'm not sewing in this boning, you can either burn it with a lighter or you can tape off your ends of your boning end pieces. This is just so it doesn't poke through your fabric and end up poking you in the back. So I like to do that before I enter in my boning to those channels that we just created on our center back. Now that's done, I'm gonna do a base stitch all along the bottom and also this under bust edge right here. So we're gonna base stitch that bottom up, making sure our boning stays in place and then those under bust cups. And again, this is just a basting stitch. We're just making sure everything stays in place right now. Once that's done, we're gonna set our corset aside and we're gonna start working on our cups. So we're gonna take our left and right cups, make sure you find the center seam, place those right sides facing, pin together and sew. Once that's sewn, either using a tailoring ham or anything else that you have that's curved, press the seam allowance to the larger cup. And then once I have that pressed nicely, I'm gonna sew down the seam allowance to that larger cup size. Once I'm done with that, I'm gonna grab the top of the cups, that pointed top. We're gonna to find the right ones, place those right sides facing to your cups, pin in place, and then we will sew those down. Once those are connected, I'm going to, again, with my tailoring ham, or if you have something that's curved that you can press this on just to help your cups keep their shape, I'm gonna press the seam allowance down towards the bottom of the cup. And once I have that pressed down, I'm gonna sew that into place just like we did earlier with our two center seam cups. And as you can see, our cup is going to look like this with our seam allowance sewn down and everything put together. Now, we have our lining and optional foam pieces. You do not have to use foam for your cups. And I'm going to repeat all of those exact same steps for those pieces. So here are all my cup pieces. If you're using the foam, place that at the bottom and then we will take our main fabric and our lining cup pieces and we will place those right sides facing. If you're not doing the foam, you can just do right sides facing for your main fabric and your lining. But I'm gonna pin these just at the top of the cup. So I'm pinning all the way along the entire top of the cup. And you can see I've already done one cup. We're just gonna do this one. And once I have that pinned and zoned down, I'm gonna trim off my seam allowance. 
Once that's done, I'm gonna flip everything right sides out and I'm gonna use pins to do this, but I'm gonna flip it so that our lining is not showing. And I'm gonna add a top stitch just to the top of my cup. So I'm gonna pin all of this into place and then do a top stitch all along that top edge of my cup. So you can see I have done that here and now I'm just gonna close up that bottom just with a basting stitch, like you can see that I've done with my other cup. Again, just a basting stitch to close up the bottom. Again, if you have a tailoring ham, you can use a tailoring ham. I'm pressing this on my mannequin, just something that is round. It can be some old t-shirts or a sweater to really help your cups keep their shape. It really does help when you're sewing everything into the corset. And now we're going to attach our cups to our corset. So grab your corset again. We're going to make sure we align those seams. That center seam, the first center seam, is going to align with your front and side seam on your corset. So make sure when you're doing it, those seams align. And you're just going to pin your cups right sides facing all the way along from the top edge of both until it is sitting nicely into your corset. I always take my time with cups. This is the part where things can easily start to get messed up. So make sure you take your time both pinning and sewing. Also, sometimes my pins will just be fussy with my sewing machine and I find it easier to just go along and make sure I go super, super slow and make sure my middle seam is aligning and then sew this cup as I go without the pins. It's really up to you. Just make sure you go extra slow when you're doing your cups because this is the part where it's really easy to mess up. Now that I have one cup in, I'm just gonna repeat that exact same step for my other cup. And now we're gonna close up that bottom. I've already done one side. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get our bias tape ready and we are going to sew down our bias tape into the seam allowance of our cup and our corset. So like you can see here, we're going to sew that down just into the seam allowance. There shouldn't be a stitch on the outside of your corset. So you can see I'm doing that here. And again, do this super slowly so that it looks nice and neat. Once you're done with that, we are gonna trim off the seam allowance just for the seam allowance. Don't cut your bias tape. Your bias tape, I'm gonna show you in this next step, is going to fold over all of those raw edges. And to fold this over and make it look neat, instead of just going straight to your machine, I like to go in by hand and just do a base stitch and make this look nice and folded over before I go in with my machine. So here's my base stitch and everything is covered as far as my raw edges. And now I'm gonna go along in my sewing machine and you can do this on the front of your corset or the back. I like to go in from the back. I know a lot of people go in from the front and we're gonna sew along, follow along those base stitch lines that I've already sewn. And this makes it a lot easier to sew and make this look neat without messing up your lines. Once your channel's sewn, this is where you can enter in your underwire into that channel right there. I'm not using an underwire, but this is where you would enter it in. Don't forget to remove your basting stitch with your seam ripper. And then I like to go in and I like to seam rip the ends. You can see I'm doing that here. And then once I have enough, I'm going to fold in the remainder of my bias tape so that you don't see any raw edges. And I'm gonna pin that into place and then if you have an underwire, I would suggest finishing that off by hand. If not, you can go in with your machine and sew down that remainder flipped in part of your bias tape. And now our cups are all done. We are gonna move on to the bottom. You can do a hemmed bottom. I like to do a bias tape finish. And there's a couple different ways that you can do this. I like it so that my bias tape is not showing at all on the bottom. Uh, so to do this, I'm gonna take my bias tape and I'm gonna place it right sides facing and align the bottom edges, fold over that end, so that way when we flip this when we're done, there won't be any raw edge on the end. And I'm going to pin these together all along the bottom of my corset. Once it's done, we're gonna sew that into place. Then I'm just gonna trim off all that excess seam allowance before we flip over our bias tape. Try not to get my bias tape like I think I almost did right there. 
And I'm gonna flip this again. I like to flip it once in on itself so that the raw edge isn't showing. And then once again, all the way up and over because I don't want the bias tape to be showing at all on the outside of my corset. So once I have that, I'm going to pin it into place and then sew everything down. And again, I like to use a lot of pens when I do this so that it looks nice and neat. You can also press as you go with your bias tape. That way you know it's gonna look good for your finishing edge. And that's gonna look like this once I have everything pinned and then I'm gonna take it to my machine and sew it down. Now before we work on our grommets, we're gonna work on that back modesty panel. So I've already done my interfacing. I'm just gonna take my lining and my fabric Put these right sides facing and I'm gonna pin at the top and the bottom and one side. You can choose which side you want, but three sides, only one side is gonna remain unsewn. And once that's sewn, we are just going to trim off our seam allowance and then flip everything inside out and give it a nice press. And then you can also do an optional top stitch around your edges. Now I'm gonna take this back to my corset and you should have a notch on your pattern where you're gonna place this. You're gonna place this wrong sides facing each other and sew this down. Once it's sewn down, you will flip it so that now it looks like the lining is part of the lining and the outside is facing the outside and you will sew that back down into place. So it should look like this when you're done. Final step, we are just going to insert in our grommets. I am using a one inch grommet. Normally I use a half inch, but this time I only had one inch, so you can use as many or whatever size grommets you would like. I just wouldn't suggest using too large of grommets. I am placing these one inch away from each other, and with either a grommet press or a grommet kit, you will insert in your grommets. And then the last step, you're just going to lace up your corset. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you enjoy your new corset. Please let me know if you have any questions and follow along if you want to see the next pattern release.